The telescope uses two of these NEMA 17 stepper motors. So these are the four wire versions. Uh, you can see there's a four just coming out there. There is um, a version with more wires. You don't want that for the particular circuit I've got. These NEMA, uh, NEMA motors are quite cheap to get and this is a quite a powerful one. This is a two amp motor. I don't take it all the way to that power. The circuit lets you limit the amount of current going into the motors themselves. So you don't have to use all of that power on the motor. Um, but it's nice to know that you have extra capability there if you need to, um, if you have any problems with the telescope not moving reliably enough or something. Sometimes you need to just increase the power a little bit. The important thing about these NEMA 17 motors is they usually come in 200 steps per revolution. So the most common one is one which does 1.8 degrees for every step that the motor takes. You can also get one which is twice the resolution, so it's 400 steps per revolution, and that's what I use. So each time I instruct this motor to move one step, so just one tiny part of a rotation, this moves 0.9 degrees. So once that's routed through all the gearing and uh, the rest of the mechanism, that magnifies out to actually quite a precise mechanism. So the entire telescope, when assembled and all the gears are in place, gives me the, uh, the ability to position the telescope on the azimuth and the altitude to, uh, I think it's 96,000 different positions. So about 250 steps per degree that I can position the telescope to. And you need that kind of resolution in order to be able to keep the camera tracking and keep the images within the, the pixels of the, the photographs that you're taking. For both mounts, you then place the motor within the mount. It slots quite nicely into this uh, recess here. And this hole that you can just see will match up with a, a slight raised area on the motor itself. So this will push in nice and tightly and then secure it with four M3 10, mm, 10 millimeter long bolts. That then holds this really nicely. There's no give in this. Then to complete this, what we're going to do is slot the worm drive onto the shaft. The shaft has a small D cut in it and you want to align the grub screw with the D cut so that when we tighten it up, that will hold itself in place. I've cut another piece of, of bar, the same diameter as the motor shaft, which will slide in and, and give us a, a nice stable axis for this, this worm drive to run on. And to do that, what I do is take another one of the RC bearings. That should slot quite nicely into this hole here. Push the shaft through. And slide another one of these little locking collars on there, just so that I can hold it all together when I'm finished. It's just slightly come apart. I'm trying to watch this through the camera lens and that's making it quite difficult to see. There we go. So that slides in there. That slides across. So what we've done is we've made a very strong axis here or an axle for this to slide on, and it can't give, it can't move left, right, up, down. So it should engage really well with the, the worm gear that we, that we attach this to. So when you're finished, you tighten up that grub screw and this grub screw, just pulling the collar tight up against here, and that will make sure that nothing moves, that this motor is now really nicely attached and solidly attached with the rest of the gearbox. Here, this is the, the gear that we've placed already in the base of the telescope and eventually this motor is going to engage with the teeth. So we're, once it's all fitted into the telescope, this is able to adjust and we could, should be able to find the perfect spot where we've got really good tight but not too um, high resistance connection between this little drive gear and the, the wheel that it's driving. So the next job is to fit this then to the telescope itself. This stage is a little bit more fiddly, but what we're going to do, this 
this gear wheel isn't yet fixed in place because we don't quite know the the position on the shaft that it's got to go yet and if I grab the correct one this is the azimuth motor you can see there's a ring in the base of the azimuth motor and that will fit into a receiving hole here and what that allows us to do is move sorry I need to have two hands here this allows us to move this backwards and forwards so it allows us to get just the right amount of contact between the worm drive here and the gear wheel that it engages with. So the next thing to do is to, and this is quite fiddly, is to get the, the gears aligned. So make sure that all the positioning is right and everything is aligned properly. And again, you probably need somebody to help you here, but what we're going to do is make sure you can see there make sure that all these gears are nicely tightened up on the shafts that they've got so that they can't move out of position after that that's with everything then secured in place it is quite fiddly be patient and as I say maybe maybe use somebody's help if you can just to get everything held in place while you tighten all the grub screws up but that should all now be quite secure the only thing that's left is that this actually can still move and so the final thing we need to do to secure it in place earlier in the build we created a little captive nut just hiding in that little hole there and the final thing we need to do is to secure a bolt through this groove into that little captive nut tighten it up and then that will keep this motor securely attached to the base hopefully you can just see the nut there oh sorry the screw there just as I'm starting to push it into place and then just secure that in my case with an allen key just to make that nice and tight. You don't want the this to be so tight against the wheel that there's lots of friction but you also don't want it to be so loose that this can slip and the idea with this this little adjuster nut here well, is that you can increase or decrease the amount of friction on here simply by undoing that and rotating this motor housing anti-clockwise or clockwise just to change the way that the two sets of gear teeth engage. Another thing that you can then tighten up at this point the brace that sits along here which holds the bearing at the top um, you can also secure in place by now just popping out maybe a washer and a nut on the end of each of these. The idea is this is adjustable it can pivot and slide backwards and forwards so you have lots of adjustment possibilities to make sure that the whole mechanism runs smoothly. There's always going to be some variation in the way that you print and the way that things hold together. So I've tried to make this so that um, any direction that you need to make adjustments so that this runs smoothly uh, should still be possible to do. You can increase and decrease the pressure of these two gears by sliding the, the collars backwards and forwards and up and down and also the vertical shaft which goes to the drive wheel that's now buried in the base. You can increase and decrease the pressure of that, how it engages with the, the, the rest of the gear mechanism by releasing these bolts and sliding this mechanism backwards and forwards as well. So that should give you a lot of possibilities to make sure you can get this running really smoothly.